as of this moment, Barangay Ginebra and San Miguel Beermen are currently battling it out in the 2021 PBA Philippine Cup. As we know, these two are the most successful franchises in PBA history. But the question is, are they still the clear-cut favorites to win this year's chip? Here to help us with our discussion, we have PBA Rush analyst Chuck Araneta. Good evening, hey, Chuck. Chuck. How are you doing? Good to see you guys. Good evening. Hope everyone's safe. And yeah, I'm excited to talk some PBA basketball tonight. Absolutely. And uh, just so everyone knows what's happening right now, as of the moment, uh, nearing the halfway point of the fourth quarter between San Miguel and Ginebra, 92 to 83 in favor of the Beermen. Still a lot of time because really comebacks are in vogue right now in the PBA. But I has a question for you, Chuck, in particular about Ginebra and San Miguel. And Chuck, the primary question here for PBA 2021, are they still the title favorites and are they still clear cut to get 2021's chip? Well, that, you know, that's an interesting question. And you know, the thing about the, 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 the where we are right now in terms of the PBA is because there are so many um, factors that come into what how each team is performing on the floor and the reason why i say that is because you look at tenebra's uh standings right now they're at three and three and if you know this game continues the way it is they're gonna drop to below 500 and three and four and people might think Nako, yan na naman yung Hinebra. Nasa sila. They're below 0.500 but they're they and maybe they're not gonna be able to defend their title but you have to consider that with barangay Hinebra. they are still in the process of integrating Probably one of the maybe top three, top four best big men in the league in Christian Stan Hardinger into the lineup. Mm -hmm. The difference between what Hinebra was last year in last year's conference compared to now is they did not have to go through integrating an entirely new piece into the puzzle. Yeah. And that's why they've had their struggles really on offense. Um, and that's why also they, you know, they've been very consistent with their play. Compared to a team like San Miguel, where everyone knows their roles, you still got the Fab Five, the and then there. Terrence Romeos looks spectacular after coming back again from an injury, and then you've got CJ freaking Perez coming <laughs> off the bench. That's so, why so if you ask me right now, San Miguel is a clear-cut favorite or a title contender for sure. But Barangay Ginebra is a sleeping giant. Mm. If they can figure out how to integrate San Harniger and how to make what could potentially be the best twin tower combination in Japheth Aguilar and San Harniger work, this is a terrifying team you don't want to face in the semifinals or possibly even the finals. Chuck, I have to agree with you about uh, the San Miguel Beermen, especially since you know they, they just brought back a guy who's won multiple MVPs in Jun Mar Fajardo. And he has looked good. He has been hitting right. jumpers. He has been doing different things. And that win that they had recently against the TNT Tropangiga, who were undefeated prior to facing San Miguel, was impressive. For you, was that a statement win of their intent of how they plan to uh, retake that Philippine Cup? Listen, Pao, we've covered PBA Finals matches before between TNT and San Miguel. And you always know there's something special. There, there's something always a little bit more personal whenever these two teams go head to head. Like you throw, you throw out, you know, whatever, uh, whatever hot takes you might have about, you know, maybe if it's an MVP versus MVP or an SMC versus SMC game, maybe it's not as competitive. When it's TNT versus San Miguel, this is basically Godzilla versus another Godzilla. Ganon, <laughs> ganon yung intensity ng laban. So, with with that victory of San Miguel against TNT, they just showed that. Even though they're already playing at a high level, it's terrifying to consider what they're going to look like when they are at the peak of their powers come towards the end of this conference. It's their depth, it's their ability to defend multiple positions, and it's the fact that they have Jun Marco Hardo, who is looking better and better with each passing game. That makes them such a terrifying prospect and really help makes us remember that it, it wasn't such a long time ago since this team was basically you know, the gold standard of the Philippine Cup and a team that everyone just could not get past. You know, uh, before I let I ask the next one, I just want to remind you, Chuck, may, may don't know man, Godzilla versus Kong. Huh? I mean, like, I, there are uh, other big exactly monsters involved for. that that's you can exactly use. Going for. Another Godzilla was like a safe answer. Baka oh, ako sa show okay, <laughs> well, either way, look, so there's Godzilla, there's Kong, but then there are other monsters, aren't there, I? Yes. And Chuck, let's talk about the TNT top scorers and the Magnolia top scorers. What are your bold predictions about the upcoming games regarding these teams? 
Mm. You know, I, I, it's interesting that you mentioned those two teams because, and I don't want to sound too nerdy, right? But looking at the numbers, and there's the statistic called net rating, which is basically you take the, and this is coming from Dribble Media Stats by Ryan, you take the team's defensive rating and you subtract it from the team's offensive rating, all right? And the number, the, the top three teams in terms of net rating are Magnolia and TNT, followed by San Miguel. Yeah. What does this mean? We know that championship teams ha are either elite at something, like for example, in the case of San Miguel, they're, they're elite at offense, and then they're solid on defense. Yeah. So if you look at the numbers, Pau, Magnolia is, is fantastic on both ends of the floor. They have the number three offense and the number five offense. TNT has the second best defense right now, and then they have you know a so-so offense at number nine, but it's yeah. your defense that trumps that. So, you look at these two things, Magnolia and TNT, and it makes sense because Magnolia has already great defense, pero pinasugan mo pa ng Calvin Abueva. That is true. Who, is based, who has the most double-doubles right now in the PBA, and is basically just reinvigorating that lineup. Same thing for TNT, although they, and then they uh, also won uh, recently. The numbers are gonna get better as Mikey Williams gets more and more uh, comfortable with his team. 36 points. He dropped 36 points. He was so close points. to dropping like 40, nothing. bro. Yeah. Exactly. Chuck. Exactly. So it's a terrifying prospect when you look at just how stacked this race is going to be for the semifinals. Because again, and I don't want to, you also cannot sleep on Meralco. Yeah. Who made it to the finals last uh, last uh, last conference, diba? Right? They're better with Mac Bello and with Alvin Pasaol. So in terms of the question, like which teams really are, are sleepers, you There's have to look at Magnolia, Chuck. TNT, Chuck. and the Meralco Bolts because those those three teams are consistent with each passing game. Chuck, thank you very much. You know, we could go on and on. I can add Phoenix to the list also, but there's so much to talk about, but we're running out of time. Thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me.